Can we pray? Our Heavenly Father, once again, we are bowed down before the throne of grace that uh, you may give us the power and the energy to be able to comprehend spiritual things. And Lord, if we miss everything, let us not miss the purpose of being here. And above all, continue guiding us into the paths of righteousness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord once again. Uh, I'm happy to be here once again. And uh, I thought that uh, maybe all Kenyans know my name, but uh, it seems there are others who do not know my name. My name is Sammy Wilberforce, and uh, I'm glad to be in this camp. It is a time of learning and how I pray that we shall continue learning together and edifying each other. Uh, I want to speak something about the experience that will bring God's people the seal of God, the experience that uh, will bring God's people the seal of God. and. Uh, I just want to look at uh, a few things in the book of uh, Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 3. The experience of Yeshua. This is what you are going to look at. And the title is The Experience That Will Bring God's People the Seal of God. We are told in uh, Testimony, Volume 5, page uh, 472 to 475, that is where we are going to look at. Can we see the board? Can we see what is on the board? How many can not see? The people at the back bench, but you have a, an opportunity to sit here at the front. Zechariah's vision of Joshua and the angel applies. Let us try again. Zechariah's vision of Joshua or Joshua and the angel applies. So I'll, I'll read Zechariah's vision of Yeshua when the angel applies with peculiar force to the experience of God's people in the closing up of the great day of what? Atonement. If you have ever gone through Zechariah chapter 3, know that it applies with what? Peculiar force to the experience of God's people in the closing up of the great well, the great day of atonement. And if maybe you may not get clearly what I'm reading at your own time, go open up your Bible and go through slowly by slowly through the book of Zechariah chapter 3. We are told that as Joshua was pleading before the angel, so the word, the remnant church with brokenness of heart and honest faith will plead for pardon and deliverance through who? Jesus, their advocate. We cannot get any pardon of sin through any other name. Acts chapter 4 verse 13 says, it is only the name of Jesus Christ which we have been given uh, for uh, the pardon or the mediator between man and his God. And so this vision of the Karah chapter 3 and uh, the experience of Joshua applies to us in a peculiar way. Now, the people of God as Joshua, they are fully conscious of their sinfulness of their life. They see their 
weakness and unworthiness, and as they look upon themselves, they are ready to do it, to despair. But we are told that the message we have for this time is not a message of despair, because we still have our high priest in the heavenly sanctuary. The tempter stands by to do it, to accuse them as he stood by to resist Joshua. He points to their filthy garments, their defective what? Characters. And this is what the devil has been doing since time memorial, to stand and accuse. And we get a glimpse of this, this picture in the book of Job, where he moves God to slay Job. But then God says, everything that he has, I have given you, but not his life. And our God will never give our life to Satan. Are we together? He can allow him to take everything that we own, which belongs to this world. But the things that pertain to eternal life, the Lord will never entrust them in the hands of Satan. He will take everything that you may think that they make you subsist, but he will never let him touch your life. And we have to rejoice in this because our life is in the hands of our great advocate. Now read together as the people of God do what? Afflict there before him, pleading for what? For purity of heart, the command is done what? Take away the filthy garments from them and the uh, encouraging words are spoken. We are talking about the sanctuary, the cleansing of the sanctuary and the experience that the people of God must have at such a time as this. That as Joshua was before the Lord afflicting his soul and asking for pardon, so the people of God must do the same in such a time as this. And so this encouraging uh, words are spoken. What are these encouraging words? Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to do what? To pass from thee, and I'll do what? Clothe thee with a change of raiment. We are told that the heavenly loom that is given to us doesn't have any human want in it, so that any man may say that it has been my devising to have this righteousness. Our work is to tell Christ, take away my, my sins and give me your garments of righteousness. And so what happens, we are told, the spotless robe of Christ's righteousness is done what? Is placed upon the what? The tried and tempted yet what? Faithful children of God. But many a times we would like this robe of righteousness without being tried. Let us go to the book of Romans chapter 5 and see why these trials are so important in this day of atonement and for the benefit of our purification. The book of Romans chapter 5. Why are the trials important to us in this day of atonement? When you reach in Romans chapter 5, you say, Amen. I'm starting from verse 1. It says what? Therefore being justified, how? We have what? Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Verse 3, And not only so, but we glory in what? Tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh what? Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the what? The faith of Jesus Christ of the testimony. Why are the trials on the day of atonement so important? We are told these tribulations or trials worketh patience, and the patience, what? X, 
experience. We are in verse 4, Romans chapter 5. Trials worketh patience and patience experience and experience what? Hope. And so we are told that uh, uh, we read once again, we are reminded that the spotless robe of Christ's righteousness is placed upon the tried, tempted, yet faithful. And so we must learn the ways of Christ. When you go to Hebrews, go to Hebrews chapter 5, Hebrews chapter 5, how Christ was made perfect. Hebrews chapter 5, you, if you read there, say amen. Hebrews chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 7. If you read there, you say amen. What does it say? Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. Verse 8, though he were what? A son yet learned how by the things which and then after learning obedient by the things he suffered he was made what? Perfect he became the author of what? Eternal salvation unto all that obey him. So as we read, we cannot have this spotless robe without being tried, tempted, yet remaining faithful. That is how perfection comes around. But if we will expect perfection while just riding smoothly upon the face of the earth, then such a perfection will never come. In the of trial, we shall fail the test. Those maybe who came in late, we are reading from 5T, 472 to 475, and our title is The Experience That Will Bring God's People the Seal of God. We are looking at Zechariah chapter 3 and 5T, 472 to 475. We are told that the experience of Joshua will be the experience of God's people in the day of atonement. And so Satan is standing to accuse the children of God, but we are in the day of cleansing and the very work of God is to make sure he takes away those filthy garments that Joshua had and put on his robe of righteousness. The despised Remnant are clothed in glorious apparel, never more to be defiled by the corruptions of the world. Of the world. Amen. In Nahum 1 9, we are told that sin shall rise no more. It shall never rise. When God brings his people to the condition he wants them to be, sin shall never rise anymore. And so we must be accepting. At such a time as this, the righteousness of God in us, that cannot be defied by anything. When the Lord does this, the taking away of the filthy garments and putting on his garments on us, the prophetess continues to say, read together, their names are retained where? in the Lamb's book of life, enrolled among the faithful of all ages. Their names are written in the Lamb's book of life, enrolled, Their names are retained in the Lamb's book of life and rolled among the faithful of all ages. They have done what? Resisted the wiles of the deceiver. They have not been turned from their loyalty by the dragon's 
And what is that dragon's roar? The mark of the beast and the image of the beast. Now they are eternally secure from the tempter's devices. Holy angels and sin were passing to and fro, placing upon them the seal of the living God. Let us turn to the, to the book of uh, Zechariah chapter 3 then and see what is happening there. The book of Zechariah chapter 3. Let us read this experience of Joshua and understand our experience also. Are we there, amen? You can read the whole chapter of, um, you can read Testimonies to the Church, Volume 5, 50, 472 to 475 to get the whole story of Zechariah chapter 3. It says, and he showed me who? Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuked thee, O Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem, rebuked thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Do what? Take away the what? The filthy garments from him, and unto him he said, Behold, I have done what? Cause thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I'll clothe thee with the change of what? Raiment. And he said, Let them set a fair what? Mitre upon his head. So they set a fair mitre upon his head and clothed him with garments, and the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus said the Lord of hosts, If thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house, and shalt also keep my courts, and I'll give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Let us talk about the mitre. Who won the mitre? In the sanctuary. The what? The high priest. And what was written on the mitre? Holiness unto the Lord. And so that is what the Lord is seeking to do. To write his holiness. You, you see the, the people of God are sealed with the father's name in their book forehead what he is seeking is to write his character on our minds and this is the experience that we are told that the experience of Joshua is the experience of the people of God in the day of atonement the Lord is seeking to put a mitre upon our forehead so that when we stand on Mount Zion we may be just looking as uh, he is continued on looking at 5t 472 to 475 we are told that the setting is in the antitypical day of what? Of atonement. Because we have been told that the experience of Joshua is the experience of God's people in the day of atonement. Joshua was afflicting his soul. So also God's people afflict their souls in full consciousness of their sinfulness. Sometimes we do not know how to pray. We pray generally, not being particular to God of what our experience is. And so we leave the Lord in quotes, not knowing what to do with us. You know that you are a thief. You should be able to tell God, I have been stealing and I don't have that power instead of generalizing things. And so Jesus takes away the filthy garments and seals his people. But they must confess their sins and repent. There is the part of confessing and there is the part of repenting. Confessing is telling the Lord exactly what is happening and what you want. Repenting is to take, to turn back from the very way that you are headed and go in the opposite direction. 
And so we are told in Prophet and Kings, page 725, PK 725, PK 725. When these people receive this experience of Joshua, we read, clad in what? In the armor of Christ's righteousness, not their own righteousness, not filthy garments, the church is to do what? To end upon her final without the garments of Christ, without the righteousness of Christ, the church can never enter into the final conflict and have triumph. They'll never have victory while having the filthy garments. Think about this. When Adam fell, he had to leave the presence of God. It will only be when man is redeemed, that is when they enter the presence of God once again. So to be able to face the devil successfully, we have to enter in the full armor of Christ's righteousness. Fair as the what? The moon clear as, and terrible as, an army with, she is to do God, to go forth into all the world doing what? Conquering and to conquer. I was shown those who I had before sin weeping and praying in agony of spirit. The company of guardian angels around them had been doubled and they were clothed with an armor from their head to their feet. This was the scene that the prophetess was shown in early writing, page 271. That because Satan will double his effort and knows that his time is short, God also will do what? Double the angels to be able to travel with God's people in the final conflict. When you entered into the sanctuary, the veil that separated the holy place and the most holy place had angels inscripted on them. And we are told that these angels look into the plan of redemption. Thousands and thousands times thousands stood before the Lord. For what reason? Not only to look at the books, but to be ministers of the spirit to those who will be heirs of the word, the kingdom. And so we can be sure that as the angels were in the sanctuary, on the veil of the sanctuary, and enshrouding the mercy seed, so also they shall cover the children of God and travel through them the final conflict. And they moved in exact order like a company of soldiers. Their countenances expressed the severe conflict which they had endured, the agonizing struggle they had passed through, yet their features marked with severe internal anguish now shone with the light and the glory of heaven. It is amazing as we travel through this final conflict and the cleansing is happening, although there will be a severe conflict inside the heart, yet in the outside, the glory of the Lord shall be upon us. And not only that, but he shall give us the courage so that we may not faint through these trials. And that is the cleansing of the sanctuary. The head obtained the victory and it called forth from them the deepest gratitude and holy sacred joy. Evil angels still did what? Praised around them, but will have no power over them. I ask what had made this great change. And an angel answered, it is the latter rain, the what? Refreshing from the presence, the loud cry of what? The third angel. The loud cry of the third angel will bring about a total change in the lives of God's people. And that is why we are told in Acts chapter 3, repent and ye be baptized that your sins may be blotted out so that the times of the refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and he shall send Jesus Christ. When we are clothed fully with the garments of Jesus Christ, 
That is when she says that the weakest of the weak among us shall be a match for Satan. Amen. The weakest among us of the weak shall be a match of Satan because the angel says, it is the latter rain, the refreshing from the presence of the Lord. The remnant clothed in Christ's robe of righteousness, the remnant having received the latter rain, proclaimed the loud cry message going forth to conquer. This is not time for defeat. This is a time for victory because all the armies of heaven are in front of us and before us. But then we are told, still in 5T, page 214, not one of us will ever receive the seal of God while our characters have one what? Spot or stain upon them. It is left with us to do what? To remedy the defects in our characters to claim the soul temple of every word. Then what will happen? The latter rain will fall upon us. Is there anything that we are still cherishing that will defile the temple that makes our channels, impure channels, to be used as the streamlets of the Holy Spirit? Then we have to cleanse our soul temple. We have to give our lives to Christ anew so that the channels may be cleansed that we may receive the power and be the streamlets of the same. Christ is not going to use any mysterious thing to proclaim this loud Christ. He is going to use you and me. The very people who have been despised and seen like they will never have a place in the kingdom are the very people that Christ is going to use. So, what will be the experience of God, or of, of the people of God, in the last minutes of this race? In uh, 3T, 266 to 267. 3T, 266 to 267. We read. Together, especially in the sealing what? Time of the what? Who are to stand without fault before the throne of God? Will they, the true people of God, feel what? Most deeply the wrongs of God's professed people. When we see all these apostasies happening our ministers, when we see our families not making right decisions, for the Lord. When we see the church uh, 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 uniting with uh, the people who are the enemies of God, do we feel deeply the wrongs that happen among us or we just uh, brush them aside and say, God will make things better? Do we sigh and cry for the abomination that be done in the city? Those who receive the pure mark of truth wrought in them by the power of the Holy Ghost, represented by a mark by the man in linen, are those that sigh and that cry for all the abomination that be done where? In the church. And we are talking about Ezekiel chapter 9 verses 4. We cannot sit in difference to the things that are happening. Neutrality in the time of our religious crisis is regarded as the worst hostility against the Most High God. We cannot remain neutral at such a time as this. The trumpet must be sounded with a certain note, not to confuse the people, but to lead the people to march unto Zion. At the time when the danger and depression of the church are greatest, the what? Little company who are standing in the light will be Sign and crying for the what? Abomination that are done in the land. But more especially will their prayers arise in what? Behalf of the church because it is members are doing after the man of the world. Of the world. We are not just to be selfish in prayers. 
we are recommended to study Daniel chapter 9 and see the prayer of Daniel. While he was confessing his sins and the sins of Israel, angel Gabriel was sent to him. The reason why angels are not sent to us to guide us is because we are even so selfish in prayers. We think of only ourselves, but not the church of God. These people, they do what? They mourn before God to see religion didn't what? Despised in the very homes of those who have had great lives. And we can speak about these things, about the abominations we see in the homes of the people who profess greatest life. In the husbands and the wives and the children. And these things have been a hindrance even to the ministers. It has rendered ministers powerless. You find somebody who is dedicated to the work of God, but the husband or the wife has become a stumbling block. So the people of God sigh for these things. They do what? They lament and afflict their souls because what? Pride, avarice, selfishness, and deception of almost every kind are in the church. Do we see these things happen among us? If we will receive the seal of God, we must have the experience of Joshua and Daniel. Sigh for our own sins and what is happening in the church. Now, in uh, 5 9 to 2.11, Testimonies of the Church, Volume 5, page 209 to 211, we are told, the class who do not feel grieved over their own spiritual declination nor mourn over the sins of others will be left without the seal of who? God. If you don't feel the burden of others, then it will be so hard to receive the seal of God. In fact, I think it is in Selected Messages, Volume 1, page 118, we are told that uh, we must be co-laborers with Christ. We, may, we, we should sigh for those who cannot sigh for themselves and cry for those who cannot cry for themselves. This is the work that the Lord wants us to do. In the mighty sifting soon to take place, we shall be better able to measure the strength of Israel. The signs reveal that the time is near when the Lord will manifest that his fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly do what? Purge his flow. Are we prepared for the shaking? We are told that the angel of Revelation 18, his work is terrible because he is the angel that separates what? The wheat from the chaff. Yet, however great ordeal it is, the people of God must be prepared to go through this time. The good thing, if you go through it with Christ, you triumph. If you go through it alone, you will not triumph. Or that every lukewarm professor could realize the clean work that God is about to make among what? His professed people, a clean work. Sometimes we wash clothes and we say they are clean. Is it? Have you ever seen a clean cloth? You go put a white cloth in the mud and wash it and see if it becomes clean. But he's saying that a clean work may be done among us. The prophet asks, can a leopard cleanse his spots? No. So can these people who are accustomed to do good, bad do good? He says that only by Christ. That which is impossible to man is possible with God. God's people will be sifted even as a cone is sifted in a sieve until all the what? Chaff is separated from their pure kernels of what? Grain. The work may not be a smooth one. It may be rough, but then it will leave us so smooth. The church may appear as about to fall, but it does not fall. It remains while the sinners in Zion will be sifted out. 
the chaff separated from the precious wheat. This is a terrible ordeal, but nevertheless, it might do what? It must take place. And I encourage us to accept the cleansing work of Christ. We are told we have two people standing before us. A physician with a sword in his hand and a butcher with a sword in his hand. Which one will you choose? A butcher stands before you to end your life, but a physician, even though he operates in you, he restores the life in you. And so today we can choose the physician. Although he stands with the sword, it is a cleansing sword to operate on you and remove all the chaff and leave you with a pure kernel. But then if we accept the butcher, he may slice, slice you a little, but he will leave you with permanent scars. None but those who have been overcoming by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony will be found with the loyal and true, without spot or stain of sin, without guile in their mouth. We must be divested of our self, righteousness, and done what? Arrayed in the righteousness of Christ. Selfishness is the ledger where every kind of sin appears. Satan was selfish in heaven and he wanted, Lucifer was selfish in heaven and he wanted everything until he fell and became Satan. How many minutes do I have as I bring this to a close? In uh, 5T, page uh, 80 to 81, will be finished in 10 minutes. The time is not far distant when the test will come to every soul, is it? In this time, the goal will be separated from the word that draws in the church. True goldness will be clearly distinguished from the appearance and tinsel of it. Many a star that we have admired for its brilliance will then go out in darkness. Chaff like a cloud will be borne away on the wind, even from places where we see only flowers of rich wheat. All who assume the ornaments of the sanctuary but are not clothed with Christ's righteousness will appear in the shame of their own nakedness. Now, brethren and sisters, we are not talking about the future. We don't want to mention names, but I can tell you this is happening among us. There are people who have stood on the pulpit and taught us the truth. Some of them I have sat in their classes, but right now they are saying there is no 1884. Another one just posted on Facebook that he'll gather all the books of E.G. White and burn it as a celebration of the joy he has found and freedom in Christ. Think about that for a moment. I cannot mention names, but we know them. Yes somebody posting that now he has found freedom in Christ and he will gather to celebrate that he will gather all the books he has been having of E.G.Y. and burn them. That will be a day of celebration. Now there's nothing new under the sun because when you go back in the history of this church, you will find that there are people who once put the books of E.G.Y. in a furnace to buy the, burn them, but they were saved somehow. Others talking about, there are things we can't even mention right now, what is happening around us. Of the very people, and one person boasting that in all Adventism, there is no one who has read the Bible apart from one person, and that there is the only person maybe that can speak to him, but others have never read their Bibles. Such a like bragging, you understand that they are falling away. These are ministers whom we have rejoiced to sit under their presence and hear the truth. But now they are saying none in Adventism have read the Bible. And it may be true we have not read the Bible because when he sits there with you, you will see how confused you are with your ideas. God forbid. That is why I encourage you every one of us to sit with their Bibles and read them because delusions are about to happen in this world that will make you tremble. And if you are not steadfast in Christ, you will be swept aside by these people. 
we shouldn't be having favorite preachers because when they fall, we shall fall with them. Are we together? If these people can reach to that extent and try to prove to you these things. In fact, it reminds me of Kellogg Crisis. E.G. White never wanted to read her book at all. Sometimes it's not even good to watch the videos of these people if you are not firm enough in these things. You will watch, at the end of it, will say amen to these things. And another one posted that uh, E.G. White was only a fat woman who actually had a problem with her health and she advocated the things that she could not herself overcome. I'm telling you, we are in a, this quote is not for the future. It is already passing before us. And we can understand we are not in the beginning of the times, but at the end of the time. I wish we could spend time on prophets a little bit, but we don't have time because our jobs are so important. Some of us want to rush back to our jobs, is it? What benefit will it be even to do an introduction on prophets? Let us study Christ's righteousness then. The members of the church will individually be tested and proved. They will be placed in circumstances where they will be forced to bear witness of the truth. Many will be called to speak before councils and in courts of justice, perhaps separately and alone. The experience which will have helped them in this imagine that they have neglected to obtain and their souls are burdened with remorse for wasted opportunities and neglected privileges. Will, we, will the children of God be also washed away with the tempest of the storm that is coming? As we speak right now, the Lord is doing what he can do to make sure that his children are right with him. To claim them not only from sin, but from presence of sin. And we are told in early writing that we shouldn't be going to listen to air at any time because the angels will seize their protection over us. And so the time used to go to seek and to listen to error is over. Trying to listen to this minister and to listen to that minister, that time is over. We are to place ourselves in this day of atonement where only the glory from this most holy place can shine upon us. And so may the Lord bless us. With this whole confusion that we are seeing around, we need to be in the presence of Christ. If you hear the things that are happening around the world, our own theologians, which we have been paying our tithe, saying that Paul never knew the sexual orientation of man in the present age, and so the book of Romans chapter 1 and Leviticus chapter 18 doesn't speak anything about homosexuality, you know that the people have drunk the wine of Babylon. But you can still dilly-dally around and say, uh, I see this movement is not organized. I'll continue sending tithes to them. Promote this confusion. And they have this big title, Divinity of Christ. They, are, they have studied until they have mastered the divinity of Christ, but they don't see the Bible addressing the issue of homosexuality. And you are deceived. You can send them their money to do their work. Anyways, this is the issue. The people who receive the seal of God, like Joshua, will be mourning for their sins and the sin that happens where? In the church of God. From that, they will be able to receive the seal of God. It is not just about mourning, but accepting that power to do a work in you. A work that will bring permanency in your life. Sister White says, as I close, that... Uh, we should come to a time that we can be able to possess the second, second nature. And what is that second nature? The divine nature. Having true goodness. I'll read the last quote. This is, should be in Lift Him Up, page uh, 266, if I find it quickly.
LH2, let me just give you if it is the one. Yes, 266.2 and we pray. Lift him up. This is what uh, we read in uh, LHU. We are to do what? Reflect what? The character of Jesus. Everywhere, whether where? In the church, at, or in social intercourse with, we should let the lovely image of Jesus do what? This we cannot do unless we are filled with what? His fullness. If we will become better acquainted with Jesus, we should love him for his goodness and excellency, and we should desire to become so assimilated to his divine character that all will know that we had been with Jesus and learned of him. In uh, In Christian service, page, uh, page 108, paragraph 3. If any are engaged in business, whether they cannot advance in the divine life and perfect holiness in the fear of God, they should do what? Change to a business in which they can have Jesus with them every word. Uh, friends, there are a lot of us seated under this roof who are engaged in businesses where they cannot have Christ every hour. It is a time we change that business. May the Lord bless us. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, once again, glory and honor be unto thy name. For Lord, you have not gathered us here to condemn us, but to educate us and to save us. Help us to accept the refining that comes from thee, not from anyone else. The things that seem so beautiful unto us in this world, Lord, help us to lose sight of them as we see the beauty of your Son. And Lord, make us to accept the righteousness that you are giving unto us, the one that have been procured by the death of your son on Calvary. Bless your people and bless your servants who shall be ministering your word. Help us to be emptied of self that we may be clothed with the garments of righteousness, the heavenly loom. And Lord, we shall rejoice when we see your son in the clouds of the air and say, this is the Lord whom we have waited upon and he has come to save us. Continue guiding us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.